In this video, we consider the Dickey Fuller test for a unit root in an AR1 model. The AR1 model is given by yt equal theta yt minus 1 plus epsilon t. We have the usual assumptions that t goes from 1 to capital T, epsilon t is iid with a mean of 0 and a constant variance of sigma square, and finally that the initial value y0 is given. We want to test for a unit root, which means that the characteristic polynomial evaluated in 1 is equal to 0. First note that the characteristic polynomial theta of L is given by 1 minus theta L. So we have a unit root if the characteristic polynomial evaluated in 1 equals 0, which we can write as 1 minus theta equal to 0, which is equivalent to theta being equal to 1. So we can test this by using the Dickey for a test, DF test, and we note a few things. First, we need a careful statistical model. Two, we need a hypothesis. Three, we need a test statistics. And four, we need an asymptotic distribution of the test statistics under the null. A few comments. First, we need to think about the deterministics. In particular, do we want to include or do we need to include a constant, maybe a trend? Second, how many lags do we need? And here, we only assume one lag. We look at an AR1 model. But in general, we need to determine how many lags before we start doing the testing. In terms of the hypothesis, we should think about the properties of yt. It's worth noting that the properties under the null of a unit root are very different from the alternative of stationarity. So we also need to think about what is the relevant comparison. In particular, keep in mind that the deterministics in the model, if for example we have a constant term, that they are very different. In a stationary model, the constant term will determine uh, the unconditional mean along with the autoregressive parameter, while in the unit root model, the constant term will accumulate into a deterministic trend. So we need to think about what the relevant comparison is. Finally, we need to note that the asymptotic distribution is highly non-standard, and this is a crucial point. Now, otherwise, the Dickey-Fuller test is a standard test. We need a carefully specified statistical model. We need a hypothesis, a test statistics, and finally, an asymptotic distribution of the test statistics under the null. If we look at the null hypothesis here, our null is that we have a unit root, so that is the null of theta being equal to 1, and we can test that against the alternative, which is one-sided, that theta falls between minus 1 and 1. However, note that the original AR1 model we had up here, we can rewrite that simply subtract yt from both sides and we get that the change in yt equals theta minus 1 yt minus 1 plus epsilon t. And now define theta minus 1 as pi and we get that the change in yt equals pi yt minus 1 plus epsilon t. And from this equivalent representation of the model, we can write the same hypothesis the following way. So the null now corresponds to a unit root which is the same as pi being equal to zero. And we can test that against the one-sided alternative of stationarity, which is the same as saying that pi falls in a range between minus two and zero. The test statistics 
is simply the t stat theta minus 1, theta hat minus 1, divided by the standard error of theta, or equivalently, pi hat divided by the standard error of pi hat, and under the null, this follows a dicky fuller distribution. So that's the asymptotic distribution under the null. Note first that the test statistics follows a dicky fuller distribution, not a standard normal distribution. And second, note that the t test on pi is reported by all the standard output, so we get the test statistics in uh, standard output of any econometric software. The only thing we have to take into account is that the distribution under the null is different. And here we have a small plot of the Dickey Fuller distribution compared to the standard normal distribution. So the Dickey Fuller distribution is the blue line we see here. And note that, that has been, the distribution has moved a bit to the left. Note also that the quantiles here, of course, then also move to the left. And because we do a one-sided test, the relevant quantile at 5% level is minus 1.94. If we include a constant term in the model, we need to take that into account because the distribution changes as well. And if we also add a deterministic trend, then the Dickey Fuller distribution changes as well. So keep in mind which distribution we use and note that the distribution is non standard, despite that the test statistic itself is typically reported as long as we estimate the Dickey Fuller specification here, which has the left hand side, the first difference of y and t, and on the right hand side we have the lag level. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching.